Uh, graphs of continuous functions. You guys, for something to be continuous, you just can't lift up your pen. You can't lift up your pen. So if I wanted to be continuous, is this continuous? Yeah, is this continuous? Yeah, is this continuous? Yeah, those are all continuous functions. Anything where you do not lift your pen. Do not lift your pencil. But what we're really curious about is what do discontinuous functions look like? And in AP Calc, we have to know what these are called. We've got three types of discontinuity. Why do you think this one's called infinite discontinuity? There's a vertical asymptote and those Y values are approaching what? Infinity, you know what I'm saying? So there's something called infinite discontinuity. Why do you think this one's called jump? Yeah, if I were to follow this graph, it's like la-dee-dee, la-dee-doo, jump. That one's called jump discontinuity. And then this one, why do you think it's called point? There's, a point. there's just a little point or a little hole that is, um, that's a discontinuity. So we got infinite jump and point. Oh my gosh, this is the worst fill in the blank I've ever done. I'm not proud of it. If a function is not discontinuous, it is continuous. continuous. Be better is what I should tell myself meaning we don't lift our pen. If you uh, never have to lift your pencil, it's gonna be continuous. Linear and quadratic functions are always continuous. And then I have some notation to show you. This is very calculus-y notation. We've never seen this before. And um, it might ask like, hey, is this graph continuous when X is C? And you're gonna say, all right, for something to be continuous, as I approach that point from the left and from the right, as I approach C from the left and from the right, as long as my fingers come together, it's going to be continuous. Check this out. If I went up here to this jump discontinuity, do you agree if I come in from the left and from the right, as I approach zero, my little lightsabers would not touch. From the left and from the right, they would have a gap between them. Do my fingers have a gap? Discontinuous. Um, ooh, that's a good point. Never mind. Okay, okay, okay. So, I was, was thinking about uh, limits for a second. So, for something to be continuous, what we're going to say is the limit as X approaches C from the left. This is all new notation. Check this out. I wrote L-I-M for limit. Underneath it, I wrote as X right arrow to C. That means as X approaches the C, and that negative sign just means from the left-hand side. So as I'm coming in on this graph from the left-hand side, for this to be continuous, we need that to uh, equal the limit as X approaches C from the right-hand side. And that just means as I approach C from the right-hand side, from both sides, they have to equal each other, meaning they gotta come together. And then, we also need to make sure that that f of c equals the same value as the limit for this to be continuous. And let me say that one more time. This is just saying, as I come in from the left and from the right, my fingers have to come together and there needs to be a point there. Because Drew Thomas, what if, if it was like this, if there was a little hole there, that's open. I'm gonna make that white so it makes sure that you see that it's open circle. And then what if I put a point there? Okay, so do my fingers still come together at C? Yes, but F of C in this case is this point up here. So this would have a point discontinuity. So this one would not be continuous, even though, uh, because this little hole was right there. Okay, so for something to be continuous, we gotta check these limits and the value of the function. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna start this notation again. This is something new. We're gonna say the limit as X approaches two from the left. We're gonna have that, and then over here, I'm gonna say the limit as X approaches two from the right. Which one of these two functions do you think I should look at if I'm saying, hey, my X's are approaching two from the negative side of two or from the smaller side of two? Should I say when X is less than two or when X is greater than or equal to two? Less than. Less than. So you guys, what that means is I'm gonna use this top equation. I'm gonna put that five X minus nine right there. I'm going to put it in blue, 5x minus 9. And we're going to go ahead and evaluate what is that limit. And I got the 2 from right there. Why I chose 2 was from right there. You guys, what we do then is you just plug in 2. 
What is five times two minus nine? One. That's one. Love it. We need to see if we get one by plugging in two when, to the function we're, we're approaching two from the positive side. If you're coming in from the positive side of two, we're always going to choose x values that are bigger than two. So I'm going to use this function right here. One half. <coughs> hey, Mr. Richards. Hello. Times the absolute value of x. Okay, you guys, what happens if I plug in a two here? What's the absolute value of two? Two, two times one half? Four. One. Oh, yeah, you got it. So you guys, do my limits equal each other from the left and from the right? They both equaled one, so that's good. And then we got to know, wait, what is the value of the function when x is 2? What is f of 2? What is the point? Would I look at the top one when x is less than 2 or the bottom one when x is greater than or equal to 2? Bottom. bottom one. So I'm going to use this one here because this is when x is equal to 2. And you might be like, didn't we already do that? You're right. But this is getting us the actual value of the function. We've already analyzed that. One half of 2 is just going to get me 1. So would you say all of these are the same? Because they are the same, we're going to go ahead and say this is a continuous function. Boom. Okay, so forget about the graph right now. Now I'm staring at this piecewise function. Let's try this again. Ready? Let's try this again. We're going to talk limit. And we're going to use whatever x value they had right here. So in this case, it's 2 again. On the next one, it's a 4. And on the last one, it's a 2 again. Why did I use 2 so much? I don't know. We're going to choose as the limit as x approaches 2 from the left, and we're going to compare that as x approaches 2 from the right. 2 from the left, would we say that means when x values are bigger than 2 or less than 2? Top or bottom? Bottom. bottom. x is less than or equal to 2. I'm going to say, all right, that function was 2 minus x. 2 minus x in red. Okay. Then you're just going to plug in this value, too. What is 2 minus 2? Zero. zero. So from the left, we get 0. As x values approach 2 from the right, 2 from the right, if I'm looking at a number line, 1, 2, 3, if I'm approaching 2 from the right, I'm coming in like at from 4, 3, all those numbers are bigger than 2. So I'd go use this top equation because those x values are bigger than 2. I'd have 3x minus 2. I'm going to go plug in that 2. What is 3 times 2 minus 2? 4. Do these equal each other? So that means as I'm coming into 2 from the left, I hit 0. As I come into 2 from the right, I'm hitting 4. What kind of discontinuity would I have? Jump discontinuity because they didn't equal each other. Cool? So we're going to say, nope, discontinuous. And maybe we even say jump discontinuity. Jump discontinuity. So I say the limit as x approaches 4 from the left versus the limit as x approaches 4 from the right. If you're struggling at which equation to use, anytime it's the negative sign, that means left, and I would just go with less. Left means less than 1. So 4 from the left is going to be the x is less than 4. So I'm going to use the 2x squared plus 5. 4 from the right would be the other one. Ew, 4 cubed. Why would I do that to us? Shoot, that was dumb, dumb. All right, if you use a calculator, I'm good with it. Labeo, we might need your help. When we plug in our four there, what did you get on that left side? 37? You got 37 on that one? Let's see if I can do this one. Let's see if I can do this. 64 minus 20 is 44. 47? Oh, from the left and from the right, did they equal each other? Nope. So what do I have between them? A jump again. Yep. Anytime that these limits don't equal, girlfriend, it'll always just be a jump. Good call. And you might be like, wait, why didn't you plug in the point again? Why didn't you get f of 4? We have to stop right here because we already knew if those don't equal, we got a problem. We got a problem. How do you get the other disc? Look at this one. You're like, wait, what would this even look like? I'm going to show you, actually. I'm going to go in Desmos, <laughs> and I'm going to graph this up. Um, what would we got going on here? We got a little bit of x minus 2, and then we got that divided by, oops, I don't have that typed in there at all. Uh, x minus 2, x minus 2 over 
uh, x squared minus 4. And guess what? Okay, here's what we got. This graph is this equation. What do you think this means, though? You with me, LeBeau? I think this will help, yeah. When x doesn't equal 2, what would this happen on the graph? And our calculators don't help us in this case either. If x doesn't equal 2, you guys, this is technically a whole. If x doesn't equal 2, we got a whole right there. Why wouldn't our calculator show that to us? I don't know. It's really annoying. Uh, x doesn't equal 2. And they're saying when x is 2, my y is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There should be a point right there based on this graph. So do you agree? At 2, if this is the info, we should have a hole there. Let's do that. Let's just sketch this on our little picture. So let's go to our little picture. We're going to just say, um, this looked a little, oh, come here, come here, little guy. This looked a little something like when X was two, we had a hole. So just go ahead and put a hole. Um, so this graph, thanks to our calculator, said when X is two, we have a hole. X cannot equal two on this graph. And on the bottom one said, when X is two, my Y is actually five. Boom. This is just a good old sketch. So based on this picture, when X is two, what do we have going on there? What kind of discontinuity was that one going to be? Point. And here's how it works. Ready? We've got to find the limit as X approaches two. And you guys, you agree? We don't really have it from the left and from the right. We just have one function. So let's just go plug in two to this function. What would we get? Over? It's zero over zero, right? We'd get zero over there, zero. So that's how we know we've got this hole. But then the value of the function when x is 2, we had 5. So again, because these don't equal, we know we've got a discontinuity. I'm okay with you just saying discontinuity. Technically, it's a point discontinuity. But it's fine to just say we've got a discontinuity. So this is some new notation as well. Um, this is read as x approaches infinity. You guys, which axis is the x-axis, horizontal or vertical? The horizontal axis is the x, right? So this is saying as x goes to infinity, so this just means as we go right. If x is approaching infinity, that just means I'm going right on the x-axis. And this is just saying as x approaches infinity or goes to the right, you guys, what are these y values doing, would you say? They're all going increasing all the way to infinity. So how do we write this? This is, again, new. This is what we write in AP Calc. My y approaches infinity. Then, how do you think we interpret this? As x approaches negative infinity. Again, if this is the x-axis, wouldn't negative infinity just be going left? So I'm going to say, all right, as x goes left, as I look at this graph, as I go left on this graph, what are those y values doing? They're going down to negative infinity. So we're going to say my y approaches negative infinity. All right. This guy here, I don't care about specifics. I'm asking as we're going all the way to infinity and negative infinity. So the biggest exponent is going to... Um, make the general shape of our graph. What does x cubed look like with your arms? x cubed looks like, whoosh, what would negative x cubed then do? Whoosh. So all I care about, you guys, is let's just say, all right, it's going something like that. It's just going to go down. Or you could even just go like this. It's a negative x cubed graph. I don't care about the specifics of it. All I want to think about is this now. As x goes to infinity, as we go all the way right, what are those y values doing? Decreasing. Decreasing. So they're going to go, my y's are going to negative infinity. As my x's approach negative infinity or as I go left, what are those y's doing? They're going in infinity.